Chapter 2. First notes here, starting with 2.1, describing location in a distribution. Uh, we're going to start with this term percentiles. You may already be familiar with percentiles from uh, standardized test scores. For example, you've probably gotten those back, and it's shown what percentile you're in for a given subject. Blank there. One way to describe the location of a value in a distribution is to tell what percent of observations are less than it. So the definition, the p -th percentile, and that could be the 50th percentile, the 75th percentile. So the p -th percentile of a distribution is the value with p percent of the observations less than it. So let's say you're at the 25th percentile. That means you're greater than 25% of the people, or you could say 25% of the people are below you. Okay, so percentiles... Not too difficult of a, a concept to grasp so far. Let's look at the first example. It says, Jenny earned a score of 86 on her test. How did she perform relative to the rest of the class? And here's the distribution of test scores for the entire class. And Jenny, she got the 86. Okay, so since we're already good at reading these stem and leaf plots, um, if she's the 86, the 80s are here. That's her right there. So she's at that 6 right there. I just put a little circle around it. Um, so if she's in that position, she's above how many people? Well, there's 25 people in this class total. It looks like she's above 21 of them. Right? She's above 1, 2, 3, all these people. She's above 21 other students. So if she's above 21 out of 25, that gives us 0.84. So we say she's at the 84th percentile. Uh, among her class on that test. So down here in italics, what is a percentile really? Um, it's just, it measures the location. So it measures the location of an individual in distribution. That's all it does. So it measures where you're at, your location in a distribution. And then the next part there, on a test, is a student's percentile the same as the percent correct? It says students commonly mistake that. No, it's absolutely not the same as the percent you got correct. Okay, let's clarify that right now. So that's not true. It's not the same as your percent correct. Your grade percent is not the same as percentiles. Percentiles is totally different. Percentiles is your location of the distribution. Like, for example, the percentage of people just below you on that test. Let me just scroll down here. So example two, similar example, I see the stem and leaf plot already. It says wins in Major League Baseball. The stem plot shows the number of wins for each of the 30 Major League Baseball teams in 2009. I don't know where my beloved Cubs were that year. I don't think they were at the top, though. And just a quick reminder, if you ever have to make one of these and organize the data in one of these, it's really important to go ahead and have this key. And you just have to give one example, like five with a slash and nine represents a team with 59 wins. You don't have to say who it is. It's just how we read the data from the stem and leaf plot. Just a quick reminder from chapter one. So our objective is to calculate and interpret the percentiles for the Colorado Rockies. That was a 92 win team. The Yankees, they were the 103 win team. They were at the top that year. And the Cleveland Indians who had 65 wins. So I'm gonna actually color code these. I got purple for the Rockies. Uh, I got black for the Yankees and red for the Indians. So I think that pretty much corresponds to their team colors in real life. So we'll start by just circling these teams, identifying them on the stem and leaf plot. So the 92 win team, the Rockies, go to the 90s there, then they must be with the two. So there's our Colorado Rockies, the 92 win team. Yankees, they're with the top, the 103 win team, the only team under the 10s. 103, there's the Yankees. And then the Indians, the 65 win team, they're in the 60s. And it could be either one of those fives. It's not going to make a difference in this case because, the, remember, the percentile represents the percent of individuals below you. So whether you're that five or you're that five, it won't matter because we're going to look at the numbers below the fives. Okay, so in purple here, let's start with the Colorado Rockies, CR for short. So if they're the 92-win team, it looks like they beat, and double-check me on this, but it looks like they're above... 24 other teams. 
since there's 30 teams in Major League Baseball, 24 out of 30, that's 0.8. So we'd say they're in the 80th percentile. The Colorado Rockies that year would be in the 80th percentile, or at the 80th percentile, I should say, uh, among 2009 Major League Baseball teams. And that's a really important distinction. I make that error sometimes. You should say at the 80th percentile, not in the 80th percentile. They are at the 80th percentile. Just remember that percentiles are a measure of location, so you're at a certain percentile. Technically, you're not in a certain percentile. So that's why I put that little at sign there. All right, let's go ahead and look at the New York Yankees, apparently the best team in baseball that year. Uh, they won 103 games. They're above all the other teams. So if there's 30 teams, we already know that they beat 29 other teams. So if they're above 29 teams, let's do the math here. 29 out of 30, we get 0.9666 repeating, uh, which puts us at about the 97th percentile. And technically, that's a, as high as you can get here for, I mean, you have 30 baseball teams and you're the best one. That puts you in the 97th percentile. You're above 29 out of 30 teams. So the Yankees are about, well, they're as high as you can be in this case. Let's go to last and apparently least of these three teams, the Cleveland Indians. And again, whether you choose this five or this five, because they won 65 games, it's not going to matter. Because for, per, for percentiles, we look at the teams below. So since there's three teams below for the Cleveland Indians, CI for short in red here, three teams are below you, or you could say you're above three teams, so three out of 30, that, that math's not too bad. Point one, so they'd be at the 10th percentile among Major League Baseball teams that year. So with the stem and leaf plot and just asking about percentiles, the math really isn't too bad. You just look at the observation you're interested in, see how many observations are below it, divide that by the total. In this case, it was 30, and that gives us our percentile, which is our measurement of location, where each team is at in the distribution. All right, on to our next topic. That is cumulative relative frequency graphs. Um, I'm, I don't use this name, but if you ever see it or hear it, the other fancy and really funny, weird name for these, people call them ogives. O-G-I-V-E-S, ogives. It's probably the only time you hear me say it, uh, but if you do see it on a question or some obscure place, that's another name for these things. So the definition, uh, it's really short. It just says a cumulative relative frequency graph displays the cumulative relative frequency of each class of a frequency distribution. Okay, and something really common to these graphs, and if I had a Drake meme, I would put it in here because it's kind of funny and it applies. Uh, it goes from 0 to 100. I don't know how fast it goes. I don't want to say real quick, but uh, this, these graphs go from 0% up to 100%, and they just illustrate over the distribution uh, basically the percentage that's in each. It builds up to represent, it starts at zero and it goes to 100%. So these graphs are actually really simple. We just have to learn how to read them. So it's, it's, uh, it's also really related to percentiles. So we can kind of look at, uh, we can read percentiles from these graphs as well if they go from 0% to 100%. So let's try this example out. Example four says state median household incomes. And the great part about this example, this data, is it's actually true. So all these examples that I use, that I get, um, that's what makes it kind of worthwhile, is they're all realistic, they're true. It says here is a cumulative relative frequency graph showing the distribution of median household incomes for the 50 states and the District of Columbia. Can't figure out those people. So we got 50 states and D.C. in there. This is the distribution for median household income. It says California with a median household income of $57,445 is at what percentile? Interpret this value. So I'm just going to give you a second to take a look at this graph and see how you might interpret that. If I told you where California was, obviously you can't exactly pinpoint it down here probably, but there's your median household incomes. And where you would guess California might be um, as far as the percentile. Got it? Okay. So uh, I guess it really helps if you have a ruler here. I have a tool on the iPad where I can make really straight lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by, I'm looking at California 
They're at 57,445. I'm going to try to find that as close as I can on the x-axis here. So if I can map that out, I can map out its percentile. So to me, that's about, man, that's close, 57, 445. I'm right in between 55 and 60. And where I'm at, if I can just take that 57, 445, I'm about there. If I can map that out to the graph, that's great. So what percentile does that correspond to? Remember, this is the 0 to 100 graph. So if you can read it straight over, map that out straight over, use your ruler, in my case the iPad straight line tool, that puts me just under uh, 0.8 or the 80th percentile. So that's your first illustration of how to read these things. Find California's value down here under the median household income and then map it up and then straight over and see what percentile we correspond with. Obviously it's not exact, right? We're just, it's just kind of what it appears to us at this point. I try to draw that line as best I could. So we're looking at about the 80th percentile. Now we feel really good and we've done really well up to this point, but most people forget this little part right here, that I word, interpret. So interpret this value. What does that mean if California is at about the 80th percentile? Well, that means California's median household income is greater than 80% of states. Maybe a little sidebar there, not, I mean, including D.C. So I'm not excluding D.C. It's greater than 50% of states, including D.C. I didn't make that note, but I think that's implied in this problem. Uh, I guess an alternate way to say it, maybe you thought of it this way. You could say 80% um, of states have a median household income below that of California's. I mean, that's, that's the other way you could have said that. And then part B says, what is the 25th percentile for this distribution? So what is it? The 25th percentile for this distribution. What's another name for this value? So maybe you know right away, off the top of your head, the other name for the 25th percentile. We're going to map it out in a really similar way. We're just going to go backwards. So cumulative relative frequency. Cumulative means building. So we're, we're building from 0 to 100 again, right? Relative frequency means uh, percentile, your percentage in that distribution, relative to that distribution. So the 25th percentile, let's just map it out backwards. So get that, that ruler, straight line out, and let's try to find 25 as best we can. So it's right between that tick mark above the 0.2, below the 0.4. I think that's 0.25 there. Map that out, hit the graph here, and then drop it straight down. And that's going to give us a pretty good indication. It's still an estimate. Right? We don't draw perfectly straight lines and put them perfectly in place. But that's going to give us a pretty good in indication as to where the 25th percentile is at. So we find 0.25 here, straight line over, hit the graph, and then straight down where we at. And that looks like about $45,000. And if you don't remember the other part yet, what's the other name for that value? The 25th percentile, a.k.a. Q1. That's the first quartile, or shorthand, we just write Q1. And I can just need to scroll down a little bit more here. Part C says, where is the original graph the steepest? What does this indicate about the distribution? So let's look at the shape of that graph and just try to identify it. Uh, over what interval is that thing really steep? So there's a couple intervals here that look pretty not steep. Um, I would say this this stuff here from about 55,000 on, which, I mean, I guess it's less common to be in the wealthier states. That looks a little flatter. And the 35 to 40 here, that looks pretty, yeah, that's pretty flat as well. Um, maybe just the way I have it marked out, I was thinking 45 to about 55. That might be the steepest. Or it, it would even be acceptable in this case. You could say even 40. I'm thinking 40 to, yeah, about 55. There's a really steep region there in the graph. So I'd accept either answer. If you see it from 40 to 55, or if you think it's, it's, it's steeper here, starting at the 45. So if you said 40 to 55, or if you just said 45 to 55, I would accept either of those. Um, and then I guess... The difficult question, I mean, that's kind of easy to observe. We can observe, like, oh, yeah, it's a sharp, that's steep right there. There's other two pieces. That one's flat. That down there is flat. But in here is really steep. What does that mean? Well, like the Drake song, 
You know, if you're climbing really quick, what are you grabbing a lot of? What are you what are you gaining a lot of? You're gaining a lot of these percentages. You're really building in percentage over a short period of time if you're really steep. So if we can just focus in from the 45 to 55 here between those two dots, wow, that steepness means we've gained from about, oh, I don't know, the 25th percentile up to a little over the 75th percentile, closer to the 80th percentile. So just in that short little 10K region there, right, $10,000 region, we've gained almost over 50% of the states. We've gone to from about the first quartile, first quartile, the 25th percentile, up to almost the 80th percentile. So when it's really steep, that means the majority of the states are actually in this 10K region here. So where is it the steepest? Again, I said 45K to 55K. Uh, if you saw it as just 40K to 55, I'd accept that one too. And what does that indicate about the distribution? Just over that short little uh, 10K interval, that's relatively short, the majority of the states, about 55%. So from 25 to about 80%, that represents 55%. We looked at those percentiles approximately fall within this interval. So just over this $10,000 range, that represents about 55% of the states because of that, the graph, how steep it was uh, over that interval. All right, that's enough about cumulative relative frequency graphs and percentiles and Drake for now. Um, and that, in fact, that's all for these notes. So I will see you in class.